Since childhood, Erin had exhibited a demeanor that set her apart from other kids. While her peers engaged in typical playful activities, she always harbored ambitions and desires that surpassed the usual pursuits of children her age. It was almost as if she held herself to a higher standard, believing she was destined for something more extraordinary than the others. Her stepmother, Melissa, had a distinct temperament that often demanded a delicate approach. Especially when she found herself in particular moods. Erin learned through experience that confronting her during these times was unwise. Opting instead to remain silent. Despite occasional outbursts. Melissa wasn't inherently a bad person. Upon moving in with Erin's father and bringing her own son. Dave. Into their household, who happened to be just a year older than Erin. Melissa treated both children fairly. Her disciplinary measures were consistent for all. Reflecting a sense of justice within her blended family. Unlike Melissa. Aaron's father. Sean. Was harder to provoke but even more difficult to placate once angered. This made it easier for Aaron and Dave to confess their childish misadventures to Melissa. Who. After initially expressing shock and dismay would swiftly mete out mild punishments. Thereafter, the incidents were never revisited. However, when Melissa discovered Aaron's intention to leave for the city after school for higher studies, her reaction was far from calm. While Sean shared similar sentiments but refrained from expressing them as usual, Melissa hoped Aaron would reconsider and follow the same path as Dave. Staying in their familiar village, Yet, Erin, unlike her stepbrother, held an unwavering belief that her destiny lay beyond those boundaries. Her aspirations were set on the city, aspiring to become a fashion designer or stylist. Roles she wasn't entirely sure about but knew would involve making people look and feel beautiful. Just like her mother. Recollections of her mother were faint. As she departed when Aaron was merely seven years old. Nevertheless, when thoughts of her mother arose, Aaron envisioned an ethereal figure akin to a radiant fairy from a storybook. Her mind conjured images of big blue eyes, locks of blonde hair reminiscent of her own, a slender frame, fair complexion, a soft voice, and a dreamy, contemplative gaze. This mental image was the only tangible connection Erin had to her mother. Shaping her aspirations and inspiring her path toward a future she ardently believed in. Life in their village appeared alien to Erin's mother. Almost as if she hailed from another realm altogether. She struggled with the basic chores of tending the garden or caring for the chickens. It was Erin's father who bore the brunt of household responsibilities occasionally assisted by Aaron's paternal grandmother, who harbored a profound dislike for her daughter-in-law. The woman found Aaron's mother entirely unsuited for the rustic life of the village and wasn't hesitant to voice her disdain, often punctuating her grievances with coarse language. Aaron's mother had been brought from the city by her son, and she held a fervent passion for only two things, singing and fashioning garments. Erin treasured the dresses her mother crafted during her childhood, holding on to them dearly. However, when Erin turned seven, her mother inexplicably vanished from her life. The young girl grappled with confusion, persistently asking her father about her mother's whereabouts and when she would return. His silence was a lingering mystery, until Erin's grandmother, in a moment of somber honesty, revealed the truth. She left you. She fled back to the city. This village life was not for her. I warned Sean from the start that she wasn't suited for him. For here. We'll raise you differently. To be a good person. Not like your good-for-nothing mother. Shortly thereafter. Aaron's father remarried. Seeking a simpler more pragmatic woman adept in managing familial affairs. Melissa. 
Melissa was introduced to Sean as a suitable replacement for Aaron's mother. A frugal, unassuming woman seasoned in family matters. She had already borne a son, buried her husband, and managed her household adeptly. Sean yielded to his mother's advice, leading to their marriage. Despite Melissa stepping into a maternal role for Aaron, the girl held steadfast to memories of her real mother. Deep within, Aaron nurtured an unwavering belief that upon arriving in the city, she would reunite with her mother, who surely had ascended to fame as a renowned fashion designer. Aaron envisioned a poignant meeting, where her mother would recognize her, brimming with pride as Aaron followed in her artistic footsteps. The long-anticipated day of departure finally arrived, even amidst the audible displeasure of her stepmother, who accompanied her to the bus station. Aaron's excitement remained unscathed. Melissa ensured Aaron occupied the best available seat, meticulously organizing the worn suitcase into the bus's luggage compartment. All right. Melissa stated firmly, her gaze forlornly fixed outside the window. Write to us once you're settled in. Suddenly, in an unexpected gesture, Melissa bent over abruptly and awkwardly planted a kiss on Aaron's cheek before bidding her farewell. The unexpected display of affection caught Aaron by surprise. Yet it did little to detract from the excitement pulsating within her as she embarked on her journey toward the city. Clinging to dreams of reuniting with her long-lost mother and venturing toward her envisioned destiny in the world of fashion. Suddenly, as if taken aback by a surge of her own emotions, Melissa swiftly withdrew and disembarked from the bus. Through the window, Aaron caught a fleeting glimpse of Melissa's hasty retreat. She's good. Aaron mused, acknowledging Melissa's unexpected display of affection. Despite not being her biological mother. The following morning, Aaron eagerly perused the roster of college admits, only to be disheartened by the absence of her name. A tall, slender, red-headed girl with peculiar glasses approached sympathetically, inquiring about Aaron's situation. It's just a mistake. Aaron asserted confidently, determined that there had been an oversight. The red-haired girl shrugged in response. Since you're confident, go to the dean's office and verify it for sure. If you want, I'll walk you there. Accepting the offer, Aaron nodded, accompanying her newfound acquaintance down the dim, narrow corridor. Amidst their walk, Aaron inquired about the girl's name and acceptance into the college. My name is Jill. No. I didn't apply because I wasn't planning to. I was just passing by. It's scorching outside. So I thought of cooling off indoors for a while. It's intriguing to observe the applicants. How they exhibit joy and disappointment. Erin found herself taken aback by Jill's peculiar way of spending time but opted not to reveal her surprise. Especially as they neared the dean's office. Well. Good luck. Jill wished Aaron before deciding to wait outside. With a cautious knock, Aaron entered the office. Greeted by a short, dense, gray-haired man sporting glasses. Hello. I'm here regarding enrollment. It appears there might be an error as my name was omitted from the list of successful exam takers. Aaron announced. The Dean albeit surprised by the boldness of the girl before him, requested her last and first name. After a momentary pause, he delved into a thick stack of papers, deftly flipping through them until locating the document of interest. As he perused it, his expression grew solemn, and he scanned the contents meticulously. I'm afraid there's no mistake. You were not admitted. The dean conveyed, noticing the dismay on Aaron's face. Softening his tone, he added, Try again next year, but ensure thorough preparation. Bewildered, 
Erin nodded in silence before departing the office. True to her word, Jill awaited her return in the corridor. Engrossed in the department's historical display. Erin. Grappling with a mix of disappointment and determination. Pondered her next steps. The unexpected turn of events challenged her resolve. Yet she clung to the dream of forging ahead in the realm of fashion. A dream that now seemed distant. Despite the setback, Aaron maintained a flicker of hope. Convinced that this setback was merely a temporary hurdle on her path to realizing her aspirations. Well, did you sort it out? Jill inquired as Aaron nodded. Feeling a surge of emotion threatening to bring tears to her eyes. I didn't get in. Aaron confessed. Her voice strained with disappointment. Oh. I'm sorry. Don't worry. You'll definitely get in next year. My older sister got into university only on her second attempt. But she graduated with honors. Jill reassured Aaron. Trying to offer solace in the face of disappointment. Aaron managed a strained smile. Offering a gratitude laden. Thank you. All right. Let's get out of here. Jill suggested. And as luck would have it. The weather outside was particularly delightful. The sun beamed radiantly. The birds orchestrated a symphony. And the flowers in the college's flower bed exuded a tantalizingly sweet fragrance. As if the world itself remained blissfully unaware of Aaron's shattered dreams. Where are you headed now? Jill asked, suggesting they might share the same path. Actually. I'd fancy a coffee right about now and perhaps a light snack. Would you care to join me? Jill proposed. To which Aaron responded. I'm heading to the train station. She lightly shook the suitcase in her hand. I came here from the village. And I have no relatives here. Jill's surprise was evident as she inquired further. No relatives at all. Erin contemplated revealing that her mother resided in the city but refrained. Simply shaking her head in negation. Observing Erin thoughtfully. Jill seemed to be mulling over something before asking. Do you wish to return to the village? Erin shook her head decisively. No. Jill suggested. Then let's grab coffee and figure things out. They headed toward a small red car where Jill effortlessly stowed Aaron's suitcase in the trunk. Setting off for a coffee break. Fifteen minutes later. The two found themselves seated on the terrace of a charming cafe. Aaron savored the brew. Remarking. Delicious coffee. Thank you for treating me. Jill smiled warmly. You're welcome. What was your backup plan if you didn't get in? Erin hesitated. Lowering her gaze. I didn't have a plan. I was so certain I'd get in. Jill empathetically responded. Life is unpredictable. You have to be prepared for anything. Erin continued. I don't want to go back to the village. Jill recognized the dilemma. But there aren't many other options. She remarked. I had envisioned studying. Living in a dorm. And securing a job. Erin shared. Expressing her thwarted aspirations. All right. Here's my plan. Jill offered with a glint of determination. You can live with me. Find a job. And prepare for enrollment next year. Her proposal hung in the air. Offering Erin a newfound sense of hope amidst the turbulence of dashed dreams. Aaron regarded Jill with a mix of surprise and incredulity. Why do you need it? She asked. Jill. Her slim frame adorned with freckles on pale shoulders. Shrugged casually and replied. Why not? Jill resided in a spacious three-bedroom apartment situated on the first floor of an aging nine-story building. The moment Aaron stepped inside. She sensed an immediate air of comfort. The first room housed a weathered piano. 
its surface adorned with stacks of yellowed sheets containing musical notes. Adjacent to it stood an ancient chair, its brown leather upholstery cracked with age. Across from the instrument, nestled against the wall, sat a couch beneath bookshelves laden with dusty old books interspersed with a few photo frames. Do your parents live here? Aaron inquired. Jill nodded affirmatively and shared. My dad's an opera singer. And my mom's a diplomat. Much like my older sister. Aaron couldn't help but express astonishment. Wow. She uttered. Genuinely impressed. Jill simply shrugged. Nonchalant about her family's unique professions. The second bedroom was Jill's personal space. Inside. A sizable bed occupied a prominent position. Accompanied by a tall wooden wardrobe that nearly touched the high ceiling. The room also hosted shelves adorned with an array of dolls. Each acquired by Jill's mother from various trips around the world. Erin recalled having only two dolls in her own childhood. A bold baby doll she believed her mom had bought and a Barbie gifted by her stepmother during Christmas. You'll be in the third bedroom. Sort of my guest room. Jill informed Aaron. The room was furnished with a fold-out couch, a sturdy dark dresser, and a desk accompanied by a chair. Get your things organized. There are towels and linens in the dresser. Don't hesitate to use them. The bathroom is to the right of the front door. You might want to rest or lie down for a bit. I'll do my thing, and then we'll head to my friend's summer house later tonight. Aaron had never experienced a country house gathering, let alone one so vast and splendid. The expansive two-story wooden house buzzed with jovial young individuals, most of whom appeared exuberant and somewhat inebriated. Amidst the revelry, Jill seamlessly blended in, effortlessly introducing Aaron to everyone as her new friend and aspiring clothing designer. Aaron, feeling somewhat overwhelmed, offered shy smiles and silently wished she could fade into the background, absently holding the plastic cup of wine extended to her. She gracefully sidestepped the lively gathering and noticed the back door leading to the yard standing ajar. Seizing the opportunity for tranquility, Aaron slipped outside. The atmosphere was notably quieter compared to the bustling interior. Near the porch, a couple was embracing on a bench, but further into the garden, where a white gazebo nestled among the trees. It appeared deserted. That serene solitude beckoned Aaron, prompting her to settle onto a nearby bench. Placing her glass of wine on the railing, she closed her eyes, seeking solace in the peaceful ambience. Abruptly, a pleasing male voice resonated from above her. Why does such a fairy seem so melancholic all alone? Opening her eyes, Aaron encountered the sight of a tall, handsome young man named Joshua. I'm Aaron. She introduced herself. I don't really know anyone here. And everyone seems to be indulging in a lot of drinking. Joshua raised an intrigued eyebrow and seated himself beside her. It's truly magnificent here. Isn't it? He remarked. Yes. It's beautiful. Aaron agreed. Although beneath the gaze of his dark eyes, she felt an odd mix of warmth and coolness. She found herself torn between wanting him to depart or desiring his company until daybreak. A month flew by in a blur. Jill. Wake up. You're going to be late for work. Aaron urgently tapped on her friend's door but receiving no response. She ventured inside. Jill lay peacefully asleep, bundled up under a blanket with only a solitary heel poking out. Playfully, Aaron tickled her, eliciting a startled shriek from Jill as she tossed the covers aside. Rubbing her eyes groggily, how do you have so much energy? Aaron, I heard you came back just this morning. Did you spend the night with Joshua again? 
haven't you had your fill of him after a month? Jill queried with a trace of unhappiness. Aaron bashfully smiled in response. While Jill teased her about being engrossed in reading until morning. Let's grab a quick breakfast. And I'll ensure you get to work on time. Aaron suggested. Preparing the table in the kitchen. As they tidied up afterward. Jill inquired. Do you regret working as a cleaner? If so. I can help find something more suitable for you at my workplace. Aaron shook her head. Expressing contentment with her work and her ability to learn a great deal. Even from the turbulent moments when her boss would vociferously reprimand her assistance. All right. Then I won't interrupt your learning process. Jill joked. Echoing the camaraderie between them. A month later. Aaron woke up in the cozy embrace of her new friend's apartment after a delightful weekend spent at the summer house. The realization struck Aaron that she needed to secure employment promptly. Despite Jill's generosity in offering her housing without charge. Aaron understood the necessity of earning for groceries. Transportation. And other essentials. The quest to find employment seemed daunting. Especially as a young woman lacking formal education. Yet. A memory surfaced. Words spoken by her stepmother. Melissa. To her stepbrother Dave when he faced a similar uncertainty after graduating from school. There's plenty of work everywhere. If you want to find a job. Go outside and look around. Taking those words to heart. Aaron embarked on a two-hour exploration of the city. Mesmerized by the towering buildings and lush green parks. Fatigue finally set in. And she made her way homeward. Just as weariness settled upon her. Her gaze fell upon a small ad posted on a door. Full-time cleaner wanted at Cassandra's fashion house. The signage for Cassandra's fashion house exuded elegance. Boasting sizable. Sleek. White glossy lettering against a striking black background. The grand entrance. Adorned with a high white marble porch. Beckoned through transparent doors into a hall bedecked with ceiling paintings featuring flowers. Clouds. Angels. And gallant horseback riders. Aaron's curiosity was piqued. But her musings were interrupted by a high-pitched female voice. A slender woman clad in an airy white blouse and a fitted black skirt approached her inquisitively. Hello. Aaron greeted her. I'm here about the ad for the cleaner position. Yes. But we have stringent requirements. Not just anyone can fulfill the role. The woman cautioned. Signaling for Aaron to follow. Together. They traversed the Snow White Hall. Sparsely populated except for mannequins and racks displaying an array of garments. At the far end of the hall lay a massive wooden table strewn with vibrant fabric pieces. Buttons of varied shapes and sizes. Brooches. Belts. And an assortment of other embellishments. Positioned behind a sizable desk sat a woman in her sixties. Adorned with very short gray hair and sharp. Attentive black eyes that meticulously scanned Aaron from head to toe. I'm prepared to start working today. Aaron declared confidently. Eager to seize the opportunity. Her resolve was met with a silent scrutiny from the woman behind the desk. An air of anticipation lingered as Aaron awaited a response. Ready to embark on this potential new chapter in her life. Cassandra grinned mischievously. Adding to her initial remark. Actually. We have one requirement, clean well and do as you're told. The main thing is to be indispensable. A quiet. Hardworking mouse. I can do that. Aaron responded confidently. Displaying a determined eagerness. Cassandra. The epitome of authority in the fashion house. Glanced at her assistant Latrice and inquired. Did you hear her? Latrice? She then proceeded to take a drag from her cigarette. 
swiftly organizing some drawings and photos into a black leather folder. Let's go. Latrice murmured to Aaron in a hushed tone, barely moving her lips. And just like that, the girl who had recently arrived from the village found herself employed as a cleaner in one of the city's premier fashion houses. Only upon delving into the inner workings of the fashion industry did Aaron begin to comprehend the stark disparity between her preconceived notions of style, fashion, and clothing design, and the stark reality. It dawned on her why she hadn't been accepted into a fashion school. Aaron rigorously adhered to Cassandra's stipulations, striving to be as unobtrusive as water and as inconspicuous as grass. Silently, she meticulously wiped mirrors, dusted, and gathered fabric scraps, all the while absorbing every word spoken by her boss. She made a conscious effort to commit every image created in the studio to memory. Despite the long hours from morning till evening, Erin found a sense of fulfillment in her work. Especially considering the evening outings with Joshua. Encountering someone like Joshua was a novelty for Erin. He exuded an aura of vibrancy, spontaneity, and perpetual good cheer, contrasting sharply with the men in her village, who often seemed preoccupied with financial concerns and alcohol. Joshua introduced her to an array of experiences. Within the span of a month, they beheld the city at night from observation decks, rode horses, interacted with dolphins at the Dolphinarium, and wandered through the botanical garden. Aaron gradually realized her burgeoning affection for Joshua. Although he hadn't explicitly professed his feelings, she sensed a mutual connection. It seemed as if the years spent in the village with a stern stepmother and distant father, marked by poverty and a lack of affection, were finally coming to an end. Aaron began envisioning a brighter future, where everything would align seamlessly. In addition to her demanding work schedule and rendezvous with Joshua, Aaron diligently devoted time to prepare for future enrollment. She immersed herself in studying every available textbook on fashion and style. One day, summoning up her courage, Erin approached Latrice, expressing a timid desire to learn more about fashion and style. The assistant led Erin into a dusty back room cluttered with piles of folders, magazines, and sketches, indicating a trove of knowledge waiting to be explored. These are the archives of our fashion house. Latrice explained, gesturing towards the vast collection. Study them. Memorize them. Some even hold Cassandra's personal notes. Aaron. You're a diligent worker. We haven't had a cleaner last longer than three weeks. I can see that you absorb every word Cassandra says. And that's commendable. Aaron made a decision to come clean. I want to be a fashion designer too. I plan to go to college next year to pursue it. She admitted candidly. Hmm. Latrice responded thoughtfully. The road will be traveled by the one who walks it. So. Don't waste any time. Learn everything from the very basics. Perfect your drawing skills. And delve into our archives. This newfound clarity filled Aaron with unprecedented happiness. The following day was her day off. Joshua had promised to surprise her in the evening. And she had no desire to leave her bed in the morning. The past month had been a whirlwind of busyness. And the luxury of lying in bed was a novel sensation for her. Back home. Her stepmother was relentless. Always waking Aaron and Dave up early for assigned chores. Erin's thoughts drifted to a time when she spent an entire morning making dumplings on the eve of her birthday. A memory that now left her feeling queasy at the thought. As Erin reluctantly woke up, the prospect of lazing around tempted her immensely. However, a pungent odor wafted from the kitchen, disrupting her peace. Rushing to the bathroom, 
she alerted Jill indignantly about the spoiled eggs being fried for breakfast. I bought them yesterday. What makes you think they're not fresh? Jill inquired. Surprised by Aaron's complaint. Opening the window for fresh air. Aaron felt an immediate relief from the noxious smell. Interesting. Take a test. Please. Grab it from my shelf in the bathroom. Jill suggested. Though surprised. Aaron complied. Returning later with unexpected news. Two stripes. Aaron announced. Surprised by the pregnancy test's outcome. I don't know what to say. It depends on whether you were expecting it or not. Jill commented. Slightly taken aback. I wasn't expecting it. Aaron admitted honestly. But I'm pleased. And I think Joshua will be happy too. Great. Jill cheered. Celebrating her friend's news. Now. Let's enjoy breakfast all day long. Aaron strode in with high spirits. Embracing the unexpected news that seemed to align perfectly with her life's unfolding journey. Thoughts raced through Aaron's mind. Realizing she had yet to inform her father and stepmother about not attending college. She felt a pang of shame for not reaching out to them. How could she forget? Her father might think she had grown conceited or run away. Much like her mother had. Melissa. Her stepmother. Had stressed the importance of regular communication. Urging Aaron to call more often. Now. At least. She had a story to share. She had a job. Was actively preparing for enrollment. Had a fiancé. And would soon have a child. As evening fell. Joshua's delay worried Aaron. He was supposed to pick her up half an hour ago. Call him. Jill urged. Concerned about Joshua's absence. Aaron's response surprised Jill. She didn't have Joshua's phone number. What do you mean you don't have his number? Jill asked. Incredulous. I don't know. Somehow I didn't ask for it. Aaron admitted. Her voice tinged with distress. We just agreed in advance when and where to meet next. He's always at work during the day. So we don't get time to talk. Jill furrowed her brow. Where does he work? Do you know? I don't. Aaron replied. Almost in tears. I haven't asked. Okay. Okay. Jill reassured. Moving to comfort her friend. What's his last name? Aaron's distress was palpable. I haven't asked that either. Jill embraced her friend. Trying to offer solace. Let's wait until tomorrow. If he doesn't show up. We'll go to his place. That night. Aaron barely slept. Consumed by worrisome thoughts of Joshua. Images of potential accidents or encounters with trouble played on an endless loop in her mind. She managed a few hours of restless sleep. Waking early. Feeling utterly drained. It's Sunday. 8 o'clock in the morning. Aaron. Jill groggily responded to her persistent knocking. Let's try to get another hour of sleep. Please. Jill. I can't take it anymore. Aaron pleaded. All right. Jill relented. Understanding Aaron's anxious state. Let's go. Aaron knocked desperately on Joshua's apartment door. Her finger on the doorbell for what felt like an eternity. Jill stood nearby. Growing increasingly apprehensive. Maybe we should call the police. Aaron suggested worriedly. What if something happened to him? Well. Yes. Jill responded in a subdued tone. What if he's lying unconscious inside? At that moment. The door across the hall swung open. Interrupting their conversation. What's with all the noise in the early morning? queried a middle-aged woman in a robe, clearly irritated by the commotion. I'm sorry.
Aaron responded apologetically, turning to the woman. We're just worried about the person who lives here. We're concerned something bad might have happened to him. Why are you looking for him here? Inquired the disgruntled neighbor. Even more annoyed. He moved out yesterday. Left with his bags. This wasn't his apartment. Jill clarified. Attempting to explain the situation. No. Of course not. He must have rented it for about a year. The neighbor acknowledged. I see. Thank you. Jill nodded. Signaling to Aaron. Let's leave. As they left the building. Aaron expressed her confusion. I don't understand anything. How could he just leave without saying anything? Jill. Gripping the steering wheel tightly as they drove. Struggled with herself for a moment before speaking. Aaron. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. But I don't think there's anything wrong with Joshua. He only used you when it was convenient for him. Now. He has apparently moved on to other things and other women. Women? How could you say that about him? Aaron protested. Incredulous at Jill's words. Jill abruptly stopped the car. Turning to face her friend. Aaron. Wake up. Do you think it's normal to date someone for a month and not know anything about them? No last name. No place of work. No phone number. Do you think it just happened accidentally? Aaron remained silent. Tears streaming down her cheeks. Feeling a rush of emotions, Jill's anger dissipated. Replaced by sympathy. I'm sorry. She said softly. Regretful of her words. I didn't mean to hurt you. I just don't want you to live in an illusion and make excuses for him. Overwhelmed by emotions. Aaron felt a strange emptiness inside. Her tears continued to flow. And her thoughts seemed distant. It was as though everything within her had turned numb. Two months have passed. Jill sighed expressing her wish to accompany Aaron to the ultrasound. But I really need to be at work. Don't worry. I feel fine. And it's only a four-stop bus ride from work. Aaron reassured Jill. By the way, how did your boss react to your pregnancy? Jill inquired. Finishing her coffee. Noticing Aaron's heavy sigh. Cassandra's office was like a silent haven. Adorned with sketches strewn across the desk while the aroma of cigarette smoke lingered in the air. Aaron. Anticipating a reprimand or perhaps even dismissal. Found herself seated opposite her boss. Trying to suppress the noticeable changes in her appearance. She couldn't mask the small swell of her belly anymore. Have a seat. Aaron. Cassandra said in her usual composed manner gesturing toward the chair beside her. Aaron complied, hoping her uneasiness wasn't too apparent. Cassandra slid two pictures toward Aaron. Which one? She inquired. Referring to the window display, Aaron studied them intently before pointing confidently to the photo on the left. Yes. It will be placed in the center. She replied assuredly. Why? Cassandra probed further. It looks more vibrant. The second image seems casual. But this one reflects the collection you've been working on. Aaron paused briefly. Gathering her thoughts. I also think it creates a kind of New Year's atmosphere. People will look at it and immediately feel that the holiday is approaching. Cassandra examined the image again. Mulling over Aaron's words. Not bad. She acknowledged. A hint of approval in her tone. By the way. I called you here for a reason. Would you be interested in moving up to a junior assistant position? Aaron was taken aback by the unexpected proposition. She looked at Cassandra. Surprised yet intrigued by the offer. The idea of a promotion had never crossed her mind. Her thoughts raced. 
wondering if this was a chance for a new beginning. A step closer to her aspirations, she met Cassandra's serious gaze with a mixture of astonishment and determination. Thank you. Aaron replied. Trying to steady her voice. I would be honored to take on that role. Cassandra nodded. A glint of approval in her eyes. Good. We'll discuss the details later. She stated matter-of-factly. Returning her attention to the sketches laid out before her. As Aaron left the office. A whirlwind of emotions surged within her. The unexpected turn of events filled her with a newfound sense of purpose and possibility. She couldn't wait to share this news with Jill and start planning for the future that seemed to be slowly taking shape before her eyes. Of course. Aaron replied. Great. Cassandra said. Not missing a beat. Don't be surprised. Latrice told me about your plans for the fashion world. I'm not blind myself. I can see that you don't miss a single word. By the way. Soon you can't wash the floors with your belly. So you know. Sweetheart. I may be old. But I'm not blind yet. Cassandra continued. Offering a subtle acknowledgement of Aaron's pregnancy. You're not going to fire me. Aaron cautiously asked. Did you even listen to what I've told you? Cassandra responded sharply. Aaron knew it was best not to approach her boss at times like this. She carefully stood up. Whispered a brief. Thank you. And left the room. Cassandra abruptly opened the sketch folder. Diverting her attention back to her work. Later that evening. Aaron stood at the bus stop. Waiting for the bus. A single elderly lady in a long red plaid woolen coat caught her attention. The woman held a big black cat in her arms. And the cat curiously observed Aaron with its big green eyes. The bus finally arrived. And both Aaron and the elderly woman boarded. As Aaron paid the fare at the entrance. The driver impatiently shouted. Nearly startling her. The elderly woman took her time searching her purse for the exact change. Causing the driver to grumble impatiently. Aaron offered to help pay. And the driver. Albeit begrudgingly. Accepted. Seated in the nearly empty bus. The elderly woman sat beside Aaron. Thank you. My dear. She said with a warm smile. You're welcome. Aaron replied politely. Are you going for an ultrasound? The woman inquired. Gesturing towards Aaron's belly with her eyes. Aaron was surprised but nodded in affirmation. It's not hard to guess for now. Almost no one notices yet because the tur is small. The elderly woman remarked with a smile. I have an experienced eye. I can tell you something else interesting. Suddenly. The woman's black cat stood up. Stretched. And moved from the old woman's lap to Aaron's. That's a good sign. The woman said. Usually. He doesn't approach strangers. But he likes you. Aaron gently stroked the cat. Feeling the warmth of its fur. Curious. She asked. What do you want to tell me? The elderly woman smiled. Closed her eyes. And began to sway slightly forward and backward. Hinting at a forthcoming revelation. You yourself were an accidental child. But brought much joy by your birth. You will find a mother twice more. First falsely. Then truly. The path you have chosen is the right one. Follow it. Name your daughter Holly. Don't go back to the past. Look to the future. The elderly woman's voice. So soothing and mellifluous. Seemed to guide Aaron into a trance-like state. She absorbed every word of the unexpected prediction. Feeling as if time had slowed down. Etching each syllable into her memory. The bus suddenly came to a halt. And the driver's voice broke the spell. Girl. 
This is your stop. You're getting off here. Aren't you? He called out roughly. Erin snapped out of her reverie. Realizing it was indeed her stop. Astonishingly. The old lady with the cat. Who had been seated next to her moments ago. Had vanished without a trace. At the doctor's office. Erin received comforting news. The baby is developing perfectly. All indicators are normal. I don't see any pathology. Assured the doctor. A beautiful young woman who explained the examination results in understandable terms. You're having a girl. Aaron remembered the mysterious woman's words. Name your daughter Holly. Back at home. Aaron sank into the sofa. Relief washing over her. After a day filled with events and unexpected encounters. She finally found a moment to relax and reflect. Her feelings about fortune tellers and clairvoyance were ambiguous. I should remember what the old lady with the cat said. Name your daughter Holly. It's a beautiful name. Joshua would like it. She mused. Her thoughts drifting to him. Despite the pain in her heart every time Joshua crossed her mind. Aaron couldn't help but hold on to a glimmer of hope that he might return. In her dreams. He assured her that his departure wasn't his fault. Promising a forever together once he returned. Amidst the whirlwind of her thoughts. Aaron couldn't help but recall the words that stood out. You will find your mother twice more. The first time falsely. Then truly. Yet. Amidst everything that had happened. Her quest to find her mother had momentarily taken a back seat. Erin considered it a timely moment to pursue her quest for information about her mother. Starting with her father. She believed he might hold the key to details about her mother's relatives. Friends. Her former workplace. Or perhaps some addresses pertinent to her search. Without delay. She embarked on a journey to her hometown. Walking down the familiar street. Erin was enveloped in a strange sensation. It felt like a place she had never truly left and yet a place she had never truly been. The small. Old wooden houses with smoke billowing from chimneys. Barking dogs. And the locals wrapped in warm scarves and sturdy boots seemed simultaneously close and distant. It was as if Erin had glimpsed this world in a past life. Upon reaching her house, Erin was struck by how much had changed in the past six months. She had left as a schoolgirl and returned as a future mother. A profound transformation. Erin's here. Dave. Her half-brother. Called out as he spotted her. Dropping the axe he had been using to chop wood. He hurried toward her. His ruddy cheeks flushed. And embraced her tightly. Lifting her off the ground with an exuberant spin. Aaron laughed. Dave. Let me go. I'm very glad to see you too. Their bond was evident as Dave kept his protective arm around Aaron's shoulder throughout their approach to the house. Aaron felt a pang of guilt for not keeping in touch with him during her absence. Her half-brother had always treated her with affection. Like a true sibling. Inside. Melissa, her stepmother, stood by the flower-covered table, cooking as usual. Her father was absent from view, presumably seated in front of the TV. Mom, Aaron's here. Dave's voice reverberated through the house. Melissa turned, and for a brief moment, there was a hint of genuine warmth in her expression as if she wanted to embrace her stepdaughter. However, in the next instant, she feigned indignation, speaking as if upset by Aaron's unexpected arrival. Well, look who's dropped in on us all of a sudden. For half a year. Hardly a word. And now you appear unexpectedly like snow on my head. Melissa took a loud breath, seemingly regaining composure and continued in an attempt to mask her initial warmth. Come in.
Take off your coat. Act like you've been here before. And come to the fireplace quickly. You're freezing. Your nose is as white as snow. Dave. Make her some tea with ginger. Aaron's father eventually appeared in the kitchen. Wiping his eyes in confusion. Not immediately registering the commotion. However. When he finally saw Aaron. He didn't even manage a smile. Which struck Aaron deeply. Hi daddy. Aaron greeted. Embracing him. But she noticed her father's unusual response. Humming and barely reciprocating the hug. Sit in the living room for now. Melissa commanded abruptly. Aaron. Her father. And her stepbrother made their way into the living room where her father promptly increased the volume of the TV and resumed watching his favorite program. Dave inquired about Aaron's work. It's fine. They even promised me a promotion. I'll be a junior assistant now. How about you? Aaron shared. Dave shrugged. Responding. Fine. I'm home for now. After the new year. I'll go to the north for a three-month shift. Aaron was taken aback. Intrigued by Dave's plan. Realizing that he might have never ventured far from their village. She pondered telling her stepmother about her pregnancy the next day. Especially since Melissa had been suspiciously observing her the day before. Each family member had a different reaction to Aaron's news. Dave was elated about becoming an uncle while the stepmother gasped and expressed her apprehension. Aaron's father, however, abruptly left the room. Dave, sensing Aaron's discomfort, followed their stepfather outside. Melissa tried to reassure Aaron, saying, It's nothing. He'll come to his senses. Currently, he's just a little shocked. Of course. Realizing the impact her news had made. Aaron saw an opportunity to have a meaningful conversation with her stepmother. Tentatively. Aaron began. Did my father ever tell you about my mother? Her stepmother. Looking unhappy. Frowned before replying. Yes. When we started communicating. Kate. Please tell me everything you know. He'll never tell me. And I'm an adult. I have a right to know. Looking at Aaron's belly. Her stepmother sighed. Okay. You're going to be a mother yourself soon. It's not good to carry all that weight about your own mother for so many years. Aaron's heart raced with anticipation. Hoping to finally unravel the mystery of her mother's story. I don't know all the details. Melissa started reluctantly. She told me once when he was drunk. And it was a long time ago. In general. They met when your father came to the city to take a chauffeur's course. He seemed to like your mother right away. She said he didn't understand why she paid attention to him. It was clear that the girl was from a rich family. It was a peculiar story. She had either quarreled with her parents or they had vanished. Or perhaps even passed away. Regardless, she and Sean rapidly formed a close bond. By the time he passed the exam and was about to depart, she suddenly expressed her desire to live with him in the village. They swiftly got married. And it wasn't long before they discovered that Aaron's mother was pregnant. Aaron nodded as the memories flooded back. Didn't father say why she left? She inquired. Melissa shrugged. Expressing her uncertainty. He only mentioned that it became apparent to him quite swiftly that she didn't belong here. At first. Sean hoped she would adjust to village life. He shouldered all the household chores and spent time with you whenever he could. But your mother was terribly homesick. It was as if nothing could ease her discontent. Not even me. Murmured Aaron softly. Melissa extended her hand as if to comfort Aaron but hesitated halfway and withdrew it. She loved you. That's why she stayed for so many years. 
Melissa continued. But every passing day, she was deteriorating. Sean knew one day she would leave. And so she did. I want to find her. Aaron stated determinately. There must still be some addresses or phone numbers associated with the places she lived when they met. And her parents. My grandparents. Didn't they ever visit us? Her father's voice interrupted from behind. Surprising both women. He entered almost unnoticed. His gaze absent as he began narrating his account. I tried to find her. There were no cell phones back then. The only address I knew was the apartment she rented with a friend. Eight years later. Different people lived there. And no one had heard of your mother. As for her parents. I've never seen them. It's as if she had a major fallout with them and hadn't spoken to them for months. When we first met. I don't even know if they were aware they had a granddaughter. I think during her time in the village. She didn't maintain contact with anyone from the city. Her parents seemed to be wealthy people. He concluded with a tone tinged with sorrow and confusion. Is there any other information you have about her? Aaron inquired. Her expression reflecting her concerns. Her father frowned slightly as he replied. If she wanted to. In all these years. She could have come here herself at least to see you or sent a birthday card. The journey back to the village left Erin with a flurry of mixed emotions. She had hoped fervently to discover some clue about how to track down her mother. Admittedly, her father's words had struck a deep chord. Could her mother have visited her in all those years? The thought that she hadn't wanted to see her stung Erin. She would soon become a mother herself and found herself grappling with the concept. Tell me. How was your trip? Jill inquired after listening attentively to Aaron's lengthy narrative. Well. What can I say? I suppose your father might be right. There's so much else for me to focus on now. Aaron sighed. There's a promotion coming up at work. Isn't there? Jill prodded. Aaron nodded. A smile lighting up her face at the thought. Yes. It's named, Junior Assistant. But it's essentially the same with almost no change in salary. You'll pass everything. Jill remarked confidently. You'll be one step closer to your dream. It's not like scrubbing floors anymore. Aaron acknowledged Jill's words with agreement. Admitting. You're always right. Overall. I'm content with everything. I just miss Joshua sometimes. Aaron looked at Jill. Anticipating her reaction to the mention of her former fiancé. Unexpectedly. Jill chimed in. I've been pondering. Maybe we should reach out to my acquaintances. The ones present at the summer cottage when you met Joshua. Someone must know something about him. A close friend. Maybe his parents. Siblings. Or someone familiar. I've been thinking the same. But he's like my mom. If he wanted to. He would have contacted me by now. Aaron explained. Shaking her head. So. Even if I find him. What then? Hi Joshua. You're a scoundrel. And here's our daughter. Pay hey, alimony. No way. Holly is my daughter. I don't want him to have any rights over her. I'll raise her myself. And if she asks about her father. I'll tell her what little I know. Jill sighed in understanding. Okay. That's up to you. I'll support you however I can. Time passed. And one day at work. Aaron was approached by Latrice. When's your due date? Latrice inquired. Around the beginning of May. Aaron replied. That's great. It's just in time to model in Cassandra's new collection spring show. Latrice exclaimed. Aaron was momentarily stunned. Thinking she must have misheard. I'm not a model. 
And my belly is already huge. Just what she needs. Latrice remarked casually. Cassandra is working on a maternity collection and wants to present it in late winter. She specifically wants you as a model. Don't worry. It's not too complicated. We'll get you ready. Meanwhile. Here's a list of your new responsibilities starting tomorrow. You're no longer a cleaning lady but a junior assistant. Latrice continued to explain Aaron's new role. Detailing tasks such as preparing clothes. Coordinating fittings. Ensuring sufficient supplies. And other related duties. Basically. You do whatever I or Cassandra tells you to do. She summarized. How long do you plan to work for? Latrice asked Aaron. As long as I can. I'm feeling great. And the doctor said it's okay. Aaron replied. Of course. After the birth. You'll be on maternity leave. We understand that. But keep in mind Cassandra won't be expecting you for long. Latrice added. I understand. Aaron replied. Although she was uncertain about the logistics. She pondered her options, Jill couldn't babysit due to work commitments. And hiring a nanny was financially challenging. The thought of seeking help from the father. Joshua. Crossed her mind briefly. However. Aaron dismissed the idea. Feeling repulsed by the possibility of him denying or disregarding their child. She didn't want to impose on him. Presuming he had no intention of being involved. Despite the increased workload in her new position. Erin refrained from complaining. She felt great and was willing to dedicate herself to work. Sometimes even being prepared to stay overnight. Engaging in her favorite work made everything flow smoothly. However. The demands of pregnancy necessitated adjustments. Erin had to make frequent doctor visits. Attend courses for expectant mothers. Purchase essential items and furniture for the baby. And prepare for her enrollment in college. One evening. Erin and her friends were lounging in front of the TV. Watching an old romantic comedy and indulging in ice cream straight from the large plastic tubs. Isn't it strange for you? Erin asked Jill. Basically. You and I are complete strangers to each other. We met by chance. And now I've been living in your apartment for more than six months. And I've got a baby on the way. Of course. For me. You are an angel who came from heaven. Save me in the most difficult moment. Without you. I would have been stuck in the village. Listening to my stepmother's lectures and milking cows. I'll always be grateful to you. Except that sometimes I feel like some kind of parasite who has entered your trust and is living off your goodness. Jill calmly licked her spoon and shrugged. No. This situation doesn't seem strange to me at all. Or are you tricking me? Plotting to clean me out? Of course not. Aaron replied with a smile. Well. That's just fine. Jill said. I am helping you because I want to and can do it. Remember. A person helps you only if he or she wants to do it because we always have the right to refuse. I like being friends with you. I'm not the easiest person to get along with. Even if it doesn't seem that way at first glance. And you? How can I put it? Balance me out. Well. I don't feel any discomfort from your being here. On the contrary. Only joy. Aaron expressed her gratitude. Thank you. Jill. I hope someday I'll be able to repay you in kind. You're already paying. Jill said. You buy groceries. Clean the house. I'm not even talking about the fact that you've practically relieved me of cooking. I hate cooking. And in the future. I plan to tell everyone that I once lived with a celebrity from the world of high fashion. Jill joked. All right. Tell about it. As for cooking. I like it. 
I'm also thinking about the future when my daughter is born. Initially. Of course. I'll stay at home. I don't know. A month. Two. Three. Latrice has made it clear that Cassandra won't be expecting me back soon for maternity leave. Wait. Jill clarified. I thought you'd be gaining experience with them until you go to college. As there's a correspondence department. Then you could stay working at the fashion house and study. Yes. That would be perfect. Jill nodded. But that's just my dream. Aaron sighed sadly. I haven't yet had the opportunity to prove myself enough for Cassandra to say. Yes. That's our future star. I'll leave her on any terms. First of all. Jill said sternly. Dreaming is not a bad thing. Especially if your dreams are backed up by action. And yours are definitely backed up. Think about it. More than six months ago. You were a naive little country girl. I'm sorry. But you were. Now you're a young. Confident mom-to-be who works at the hottest fashion house in the city. That's quite a leap. Second of all. You have some kind of fashion show at the end of winter. Maybe you can prove yourself there. At least as a model. Aaron paused for a moment. Contemplating. Maybe you're right. If I can be useful to Cassandra in creating her maternity collection. Maybe she'll notice my efforts. Great. What other news do you have? Jill inquired. Nothing else. Replied Aaron. But she knew she was lying. Just yesterday. Aaron had seen her mother. Latrice. Being sent to pick up a box with terribly expensive, exclusive costume jewelry for a new photo shoot. You're not a stupid girl. Latrice said to Aaron. But just to clear my conscience. If you lose it. Cassandra will be furious. And she won't care that you're pregnant. Understood. Aaron nodded in response. The valuable cargo had to be picked up from a luxury shopping center. Aaron hadn't been there before. And she was curious to see the expensive boutiques. The elegant fountain on the first floor. And the beautifully dressed customers. She used to think that all rich women dressed very stylishly. But now she realized that only two out of ten women seemed tastefully dressed. Aaron took the box without any problems and decided to ride the big. Transparent elevator downstairs. It traveled slowly. Stopping at each floor. Providing an opportunity for her to observe a little more of the new world of wealth. On the seventh floor. A group of very young girls entered. Each carrying many bags. Erin pressed herself against the transparent back wall of the elevator and turned to face it to continue her observations. Suddenly. A woman caught Erin's attention as she emerged from a boutique. Flanked by two tall. Nearly identical men in black. Clearly security guards. The woman herself was adorned in a light. Flowing white dress. Her luxurious blonde hair cascading effortlessly over her shoulders. Her thoughtful gaze. Fixated somewhere in the distance. Held Aaron's mesmerized attention. At once. Aaron recognized her mother. It had been more than a decade since she last laid eyes on her. Yet she seemed unchanged. Aaron's heart raced. Her legs weakened. And she almost dropped the precious box she was carrying. The elevator passed close to where her mother stood. Resplendent in white with her guards. For a fleeting moment. Aaron believed her mother's gaze met hers. Possibly even recognizing her. A flicker of either surprise or fear crossed her mother's face. But the elevator. Crawling up as if by chance. Quickly descended with an arrow. Not stopping until it reached the first floor. Following the girls with their bags. Aaron exited the elevator. Perplexed about what to do next. Should she rush back upstairs and search the mall for her mother? 
nausea overwhelmed her suddenly, prompting her to almost run outside for a breath of fresh air. Out on the street, she felt a little better, wrestling with doubts. Maybe this woman merely resembled her mother, especially considering Aaron had seen her for just a few fleeting seconds. Perhaps her mind, suffocating in the stuffy elevator, was playing tricks, stitching a belief she longed to embrace. Nonetheless, this episode haunted Aaron incessantly. Toward the end of January, Aaron began to grasp the reality of her pregnancy. Psychologically, she comprehended it, but her body only occasionally felt her daughter's movements. Other common signs like swelling, fatigue, and weakness had eluded her. Yet, now she felt a gradual slowdown. Reluctance to rise early, increased difficulty in putting on shoes, and a desire to lie down in the afternoons became more prevalent. Jill was the first to notice these changes in Aaron. Okay. Aaron. You need to conserve your strength. Jill advised. Focus on work and do less housework. But who's going to take care of the house then? You work all the time too. Why don't we invite Melissa to visit us for a month or two? Jill suggested. Aaron's stepmother had made an unexpectedly warm impression during Jill's visit to the village for Christmas celebrations. Even Dave seemed captivated by her charm. Expressing regret about his imminent departure for a work shift. The stepmother. Unusually lively and caring toward her pregnant stepdaughter. Even managed to soften Aaron's father. Making him a bit less somber than usual. Aaron attempted to envision her stepmother in the city. She won't go. She has her household there. And father wouldn't allow it. She dislikes the city. And she's not exactly fond of me. Aaron shared. Recalling the dynamics between them. Jill had a knowing look. Which Aaron recognized instantly. Are you two making deals behind my back? Aaron questioned. Surprised by the possibility. Not exactly. Jill responded vaguely. But before we left. We had a conversation. I offered her to stay in my apartment if she wanted a break from country life. She didn't mind. She was worried about you. By the way. Aaron hesitated but eventually agreed. Knowing that some help wouldn't hurt. She had mentally prepared herself for potential pestering unsolicited advice and opinions from her stepmother however to her surprise for the initial few weeks her guest remained as silent as a calm stream her assistance however was invaluable now Aaron could afford to sleep in a bit longer breakfast and lunch were already prepared and waiting on the table returning to the clean and cozy apartment with Jill in the evenings. They were greeted by the inviting aroma of homemade pies, mushroom-infused potatoes, or duck baked according to an age-old recipe. Certainly. Melissa. We can't lose weight with you around. Jill said cheerfully during one of their dinners. How do you know such recipes? Aaron asked. Curious about Melissa's newfound cooking expertise. Melissa shrugged. A hint of pink appearing on her cheeks. Jill showed me how to look for things on the internet. I read that it's not good for pregnant women to gain too much weight. It can make labor difficult and affect the baby negatively. So. I started searching for delicious and healthy food recipes. Aaron thanked Melissa sincerely. Acknowledging her efforts. Melissa seemed slightly embarrassed. Waving her hand dismissively. What else should I do here all day long? Putting things in order. Going to the store. It takes two hours. It's boring just sitting around all day. So I'm looking for recipes. Through these small interactions. Erin began to see a different side of her stepmother. Melissa was becoming more open. 
possibly due to a break from the demanding village life or perhaps because Erin had grown up. Making her feel less inclined to impose her life lessons. Erin realized Melissa was a caring and gentle woman. Deeply concerned about others. Despite the absence of a demonstrative display of affection. Erin understood that Melissa never treated her stepdaughter differently from her son. Dave. Melissa might have struggled to express her love and provide the affection that Erin. A little girl growing up without her mother. Desperately needed. Now. Melissa seemed genuinely interested in Erin's life and work. Initially an observer. Melissa gradually engaged more in Erin's conversations with Jill. Eventually. She started joining them. Asking about unfamiliar words and participating in discussions. For Jill. Melissa became more than just a stepmother. They easily found common ground. With Jill's encouragement. Melissa ventured into reading books. Watching movies. And even going for walks together when Aaron was occupied. On the day of Cassandra's spring fashion show. Erin was submerged in an endlessly hectic week that blurred into one relentless day. Melissa's comforting magic in the form of soothing soups and delicious chicken cutlets helped Erin keep her energy up amid the chaos. Though everything seemed on track and Erin anticipated a couple of days to recuperate before the show. Latrice. The experienced coordinator. Warned her otherwise. You'll see. Latrice prophesied. Cassandra will have a meltdown in a few days. She'll be like a tornado tearing everything to shreds and screaming that everything is wrong. Aaron was skeptical. Considering Cassandra appeared absolutely composed. But true to Latrice's prediction. Exactly one week later. Aaron walked into the studio with the last two boxes of shoes and narrowly avoided a flying purse aimed her way. No. Cassandra cried out. This is all entirely wrong. It's horrible. It was a failed idea from the start. They'll look like cows in those dresses. My career will end. The house will go bankrupt. And this place will become a beer bar. Surrounded by anxious assistants. Cassandra's rage had been brewing for a while. Only Latrice stood steadfastly by her boss. Attempting to defuse the situation. Gathering her courage. Aaron approached Cassandra with an innocent smile. Cassandra. Why don't we try it on me now? Aaron suggested sweetly. We'll see what's wrong right away. There's plenty of time to make adjustments. Cassandra. Lighting a cigarette. Dismissed the idea. Expressing her frustration. What's there to adjust? There's only one way. Put all these rags in a pile and set them on fire. Latrice and the other assistants quickly began praising Cassandra's creative genius. Cassandra. Though trying to maintain her irate stance. Seemed to soften a bit amidst the flattery. Okay. Aaron. She reluctantly commanded. Put on those overalls over there. As Aaron changed and strutted down the makeshift catwalk. The tension in the room hovered palpably, awaiting Cassandra's reaction to the presentation. Cassandra's expression grew even more severe than usual. Something's wrong. She muttered, but I can't figure out what it is. Summoning her courage, Aaron spoke up. The belt is unnecessary. It's meant to emphasize the waist. But I don't have one. It just awkwardly divides the figure into two uneven parts. If we remove it, the look will be softer and smoother. In a series of swift, ruthless moments, Cassandra ripped away the sewn-in belt. Yes. It's better now. She conceded. In the remaining time, they swiftly made adjustments to the entire collection. Yet, despite the fixes, Aaron felt a mounting anxiety. The idea of a girl from a village in the late stages of pregnancy walking the runway in front of a full audience was daunting. 
what do you have to be afraid of? Latrice encouraged her. Your boss is tough. And you're not afraid of her. Walking on the catwalk is just a walk. This is Cassandra's night. Not your recital. You'll be looked at as one of many models. While Aaron would walk three times among a group of pregnant girls. None of whom were professional models. Cassandra would endure all the critics. Competitors. Journalists. And those eager to express their opinions. Jill and Melissa arrived to show support. In gratitude. Aaron had prepared their outfits for the show. Jill looked stunning in a long emerald green dress that complemented her curly red hair. While her stepmother donned an elegant light beige pantsuit. Melissa had an air of grace. It was hard to believe she'd lived in the village all her life. As Aaron stepped onto the runway. The hall seemed a blur. She mechanically followed the path. Maintaining a trained smile. Backstage. Latrice hugged her tightly. Praising her performance. For the second walk. Aaron felt slightly calmer. She even managed to spot Jill and her stepmother in the third row. Flashing them a smile as she passed by. Aaron felt an indistinct unease washing over her. A sensation she couldn't quite grasp or comprehend. Her stomach didn't ache. Ruling out any connection to her pregnancy. It was more like a fleeting glimpse of something. But what exactly eluded her understanding? Aaron. Change your clothes quickly. You're on for the closing act. Latrice's urgent voice pierced through. Repeating the instruction for the third time. Despite being the last to walk the show, Aaron remained certain that it was nearly over. Cassandra's satisfied expression signaled success. Echoed by the audience's positive reaction. Indicating their enjoyment. Glancing at the front row. Aaron nearly stumbled as she caught sight of a fragile blonde figure adorned in a striking black dress. It couldn't be anyone else but her. Her mother was unmistakably gazing right at her. Despite the shock, Aaron managed to retain her composure. She finished her walk on stage, blending in with the other models. She even clapped and smiled mechanically when Cassandra appeared, welcomed by applause. But Aaron couldn't divert her gaze from her mother, who had undeniably recognized her. Without delay, Aaron hurried off the stage, disregarding her attire. As the show guests migrated to the next room for the buffet, compliments and recognition trailed her. Falling on deaf ears, her singular focus remained fixed on spotting her mother's familiar blonde locks and black dress. Mom! Aaron finally exclaimed, confirming her certainty. There was no mistaking it. While twelve years had passed, her features might have sharpened slightly. Her gaze grown firmer. Aaron. Her mother cautiously responded. Lightly touching her arm. An air of apprehension mingling with her expression. Did you recognize me? Mom. Aaron asked cheerfully. Hoping for acknowledgement. Of course. My dear. How could I not recognize my baby, even as you've grown up? Her mother nodded. Smiling at Aaron's belly. You're preparing to become a mother yourself. I hoped it wouldn't be as early as it was for me. Early? Aaron questioned. Puzzled. Her mother averted her gaze. Preferring not to attract undue attention. In the distance. Vaguely familiar silhouettes of men in black attire caught Aaron's eye. Reminding her of the security guards who had accompanied her mother at the mall all those years ago. The mother. Speaking tenderly. Guided Aaron through the corridors onto a sheltered balcony. Basking in the warmth and solitude. There. She let out a sigh. Her fingertips tracing her temples as though bracing herself to divulge everything. I wasn't even 18 when you came into this world. The mother confessed. Her voice weighted with the burden of untold truths. 
I confided in Shah about the pregnancy just after our wedding. He pieced together the truth later. The truth? Aaron's voice quivered with realization. I'm not his daughter. Am I? The mother's gaze lowered. An admission in her silence. Yes. I was young. Foolish. And indulged. My parents. Wealthy and indulgent. Never denied me anything. It must have played a role. As a teenager. I rebelled. Drinking. Smoking. Associating with the wrong crowd. Then. In a haze I can't fully recall. I clashed with my parents. I fled. Seeking a new life. I found a new partner. And we rented an apartment. She continued. Money wasn't an issue. When I discovered I was pregnant. I met Sean. He was different. Honest. Simple. Unlike anyone I'd known before. I took it as a sign. A twist of fate. We retreated to a village. Hiding from my family. We married. And then you arrived. And then what? Aaron's voice held a cold. Detached tone. The shock settling in. Her mother glanced guiltily at Aaron. Quickly averting her gaze. I couldn't continue. The youthful passion fizzled. I realized I was too young to be anyone's wife. Let alone a mother. Abruptly. She clasped Aaron's hand. Who struggled to resist the urge to pull away. I tried. Honestly. Her mother continued. A tone of desperation underlying her words. You cannot fathom the effort to convince myself each night. Watching you and Sean asleep. I'd say to myself. Here they are. My family. But I felt nothing. It was like being guarded. Caged. Unable to escape. Like the gods themselves were holding me. Like guards. Aaron's voice quivered. Tears tracing down her cheeks. Yes. Her mother confirmed. Continuing as if deaf to Aaron's emotional tremor. And then. One day. I fled. Initially. I wanted to leave a note. To explain to you and Shah. But I was lost for words. Why? Aaron's voice trembled. Barely audible. Didn't you even send a card on my birthday for twelve years? Her mother bowed her head in shame. Unable to meet Aaron's gaze. Aaron. Without receiving an answer to her prior question. Pursued another inquiry. Did you return to your parents? Did you tell them about me? Her mother admitted. No. I didn't. And as for your real father. Honestly. I can't recall. I was going through a tumultuous phase. And once I returned to the city. I lost touch with those acquaintances. Are you currently living with your parents? Aaron probed further. The woman shook her head. Her voice barely audible. No. I live with my husband. He's affluent and possessive. A pang of worry crossed her mother's face as she added in a somewhat desperate tone. I dread for him to find out about you. You wouldn't reveal my secret. Would you? Aaron? Aaron shook her head in the negative. Her mother suddenly brightened. As if struck by an extraordinary idea. If you'd like. I could introduce you to your grandparents. And we could arrange to meet whenever possible. But. She hesitated. Glancing at the guards. Perhaps not too frequently. However. I could make occasional calls or write to you. Is that what you'd want? Aaron? Aaron confronted her mother directly. Searching her eyes for sincerity. Her mother appeared torn between guilt and fear. It dawned on Aaron that her mother. Upon meeting her wasn't entirely joyful. Initially, 
Perhaps. There was hope that revealing the long-held secret would relieve her of the burden of guilt. Now. However. She seemed more apprehensive about her wealthy husband's potential reaction. Avoiding her mother's gaze. Erin noticed her stepmother. Melissa. Beyond the glass door of the balcony. Melissa appeared anxious. Seeking Erin's presence. Suddenly. Their eyes met. And relief washed over Melissa's face. Erin's memory flashed back to when she was just eleven. Down with a severe flu. Melissa had tirelessly cared for her. Staying by her side for three days. Comforting her with wet towels. Soothing raspberry drinks. And cool palms on her feverish forehead. She reminisced about the time spent with Melissa particularly their excursion to a neighboring town in search of the perfect fabric for Aaron's graduation dress. The hours they dedicated to scouring the market until they finally found it. Aaron felt a mix of embarrassment and gratitude when Melissa skillfully bargained. Ultimately securing the fabric at a price Aaron could afford. It struck her then that Melissa had utilized her last penny for the purchase. Without that negotiation, the coveted fabric would have remained beyond reach. Questions haunted Erin about her biological mother's absence through the years. Her deliberate choice to keep her parents oblivious to their roles as grandparents weighed heavily. Her mother, it seemed, had never matured beyond the carefree persona. When boredom struck, she abandoned her husband and effortlessly erased her daughter from her life akin to discarding a spoiled sheet from a notebook. Then, she returned to her parents, assuming the guise of a contrite, innocent girl who had misbehaved. Finally, finding a new husband who coddled and sheltered her as if she were still a child. Reflecting on her past, Erin wondered how she had remained so blind. The words echoed in her mind. You will find your mother twice more. First falsely then for real. Now. She pushed open the glass door. Heading toward Melissa. Melissa seemed about to speak. But before she could. Aaron enveloped her in a tight embrace. Confused. Melissa asked. What are you doing? We were worried about you. Melissa added. Her voice tinged with fear. You were talking to someone. Who was it? Nobody. Erin firmly replied. Maintaining her stance. Nobody's a nice name for your daughter. Holly suits her very well. Melissa said contentedly. Steering the stroller carrying her granddaughter along the park path. Erin smiled. Holly. At just three months old. Was growing up to be a serene and affectionate child. Erin had resumed work, occasionally taking her daughter along. Cassandra proposed developing a children's clothing line and invited Erin to join the endeavor. I think it's a fantastic idea. Her boss calmly remarked, after the success with the spring show for pregnant women, it's logical that they'd want to dress their children in our brand too. Deeply grateful for Melissa's support. Erin knew she couldn't have managed without her. Her heart swelled with appreciation for Melissa's unwavering assistance and guidance. However, it became evident that Melissa found solace in those moments as well. At times, she would return to her own residence to attend to her husband and the household. Yet without fail, she always returned within a week. Doesn't your husband miss you? Jill inquired one day. Melissa shrugged in response. Her voice tinged with resignation. He was never emotionally connected to me. Even from the start of our marriage. He used to say. I'll help you raise your son. And you help me raise my daughter. Our relationship revolves around sharing household responsibilities. Nothing more. I'm certain he doesn't miss me. In the city. Melissa found solace and joy in strolls with Erin and her granddaughter in the park. One day, as they walked, 
a woman stopped to admire a sleek, black Mercedes parked across the street. Aaron glanced at the car, experiencing a sudden shiver as it felt eerily familiar. Moments later, a tall, striking man with intense dark eyes emerged from the Mercedes, accompanied by a leggy brunette in a short dress. Aaron instantly recognized him as Joshua. Yet to her surprise, she no longer felt any emotional stirrings toward him. She recalled the wise words of the elderly woman. Don't go back to the past. Focus on the future. With a serene smile, she turned away from the car and pushed the stroller further into the depths of the park.